Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I posted it to my blog today, as you can see, I've used a lot of Wink Stella on there. Um, and once I posted it to my blog, I was thinking I wonder what it would look like if I did it with a plain background but with the sunshine coming in. So I came in here in my studio to have a go at it and I made this one and I was really pleased with that. So the one that I'm going to do now is the same as this but I'm going to use a different sun with it and I'm not going to use any Wink of Stella and then I've got Wink of Stella in every combination except I suppose I could do it just on the lining didn't think about that one, never mind but this is what I'm going to do the sun on this one came from a stamp set called Wherever You Go that one there and the sunshine on the card I'm going to do now is this one here, which is from Kinda Eclectic. Okay, so I'll start off with the card pieces that we're going to use. And we start with a piece of Whisper White, which measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, which is 21 centimeters by 14.5 centimetres in inches scored and folded at four and one eighth and in metric ten and a half centimetres and then you need two pieces of delightful Dijon that measure four inches by five and five eighths inches which is 10.25 by 14.25 centimetres that's because I'm going to line inside the card as well and then you need two pieces of Whisper White, both of which measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches, which is 10 by 14 centimetres. And then you need lots of bits and pieces for the lining and the balloon. Now I'm going to give you sizes, but they are the absolute minimum. You may not like to struggle with pieces as small as this, um, but wait and see how I get my dies on it and you can think yes I can do that or no I'll take a bigger piece okay so the measurements are the smallest so first of all there's always artichoke which is three and a half inches by two and three quarter inches which is 8.9 by seven centimeters then the first layer is Cajun craze and that measures two and a half inches by one inch which is 6.4 by 2.5 inches then we have tangerine tango which measures two and three quarter inches by one inch, which is seven centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. And then we have Delightful Dijon, which measures two and three quarter inches by one inch, which is seven by 2.5 centimeters. And then we have So Saffron, which measures two inches by half an inch, which is five by 1.25 centimeters. And then Crumb Cake, which measures one and a half inches by one inch which is 3.8 by 2.5 centimeters and then a piece of emerald envy that's got to be at least half an inch by three quarters of an inch which is 1.25 by 1.90 uh, 1.9 centimeters and you'll also need some scraps of whisper white for the clouds okay I didn't measure those because that really depends on how many clouds you want to do etc Right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my Big Shot in and do all the die cutting. The advantage of having lots of small pieces to do your die cutting for this particular project is you can get everything onto your cutting mat in one go. You're not to keep shifting it through all the time. Now when I do this I do like to have a piece of um, wax paper with me just for the um, balloon, the outline of the balloon. Oh there's a nice small piece. Oh ideal, look at that. Right, so the die set is 
called, no, I didn't think about, get, oh, it's, it's over there. I was going to say, I didn't get, think about getting this ready to show you. Um, but it's called Up and Away. And you get a total of 15 pieces with this. Okay, so there's those. They match up with balloons that are actually in the stamp set, which, before I forget to tell you, is Lift Me Up. Okay, so it's these. Um, but there's also dies that will cut out some of these pieces as well. Right, so first of all the balloon. And then we'll do Cajun Craze. I'll start from the top and work my way down so that you can see which piece is which. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Right, so this is the first layer. The cutting edge of all these dies are on the inside, so as long as you can't see any gaps there, you're fine. doesn't matter if it comes over the edge, because the cutting edge is in there. Right, next we want Tangerine Tango, which is this piece here. And of course these do slide a bit. There we go, that's that one. And then we need delightful Dijon. And then so saffron. This one tends to like to stand on its tiptoes for some reason. No, not too bad at the moment. Right, and then crumb cake. This bit looks like a funnel. And then the Emerald Envy, which is the lining to the basket. And then the clouds, there are three here. I've already cut out several of them um, because I tend to use more than just one of each. And this really is a question of trying to use up your scraps. Okay, let's tear that piece off and I'll get a bit more on here. Okay, so that'll take the big one. Like that. And then we want a medium one. Have I gone off screen here? I think I have, haven't I? All right, let's move this forward a bit while I do this. That's better. And then one very small piece. If it moves, you just chase it around. Let's just make sure these haven't moved off of their spots. I think that looks all right. Make sure that's all lined up and find the top piece, which is over here. And then without letting anything move, take all of these pieces off if, except for the balloon. Okay, so that's one small cloud. One medium cloud. cloud right now as I lay these down I lay them down upside down 
because when I glue them onto my hot air balloon I want to stick the smooth side facing downwards. Right, so that's the crumb cake piece upside down, come on. And then so saffron. Okay, that one. Oh dear, that doesn't look very good, does it? Wow. <laughs> Got away with that by the skin of my teeth. Look at that. That obviously did move big time. So that's a delightful Dijon. And Tangerine Tango. That was close as well. But I'm not putting these upside down, am I? That's it. And then the top one is Cajun Craze. Right, now what I'm going to do with my balloon, I'm just going to pull it down and twist it in a different direction and then I'm going to pop it back through just once just to make sure that all the little pieces have been cut. There we go. Now I'm going to move that carefully onto my uh, little sponge that comes with the um, Sizzix brush. See the bits are coming out already on there. There's no fancy uh, plates or uh, platforms used on this particular die. Right, so if I get my brush as well, I'm, this is my die brush. So you can see they're all just falling out here. I'll just give it a little bit of a brush to get the pieces out of the back of the die. Okay, it was left of two or three bits. I'll sort that one out. In fact, let me just show you how many, just because let you know how good that is. Just those three bits left there, I think, on one there. But it's really very, very good. You can't see that? There you go, it's three round here. And there's one down the bottom here. Okay, this is like trying to do something in a mirror. <laughs> so that's all that's left on there. And then down here. The amount of pieces not brushing out with my fingers is nil. Everything's gone. Brilliant. Absolutely superb. Right. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my top layer and I'm going to do my stamping. The um, that's my stamp for the sunshine, which I've said comes from kind of eclectic. And the birds that I've used, the seagulls, they come from High Tide, which is this stamp set here. Okay, this is the stamp that I'm going to be using. And I, which do I do first? I don't think it matters really, does it? I'll do the sunshine first. Now I haven't used this one before, so this is testing with you. Now with, when I did this one, I didn't line it up or anything, I just went for it. And I think I'm going to try doing that for here. Um, I do, I could use my stamp for my jig. But I think I'll just wing it. Okay, so that's um, delightful Dijon that I've used there. Right, so I'm going to assume the centre of my stamp there is the same as that. So 
so I'm going to go down about there and of course I do get two goes at this because I've got the other side of the paper if necessary oh no lovely look at that that will do nicely the fact that I'd aimed to get that circle on that corner there is neither here nor there but that's fine I'm happy with that so I'm just going to do some seagulls now and I really don't worry too much about these. I just look at this first one here and try and make sure that he's straight on my first one. And I certainly don't worry when they go over the sunshine. Some of these no doubt would get covered up by the um, hot air balloon anyway. Now I will tilt them in a bit of a direction there we go and I will just get some little ones on the end here and a few more down here of course I'm leaving enough room for my sentiment there we go that's good I'm happy with that so my sentiment I am using um, this one from lift me up um, this one here hope your day is on cloud nine happy birthday I love that happy birthday bit there that would look quite nice on its own actually wouldn't it even without that bit didn't think about that. Right, and I have also prepared my stamp a magic for this. If it was a photopolymer stamp, I would just eyeball it, but uh, it isn't, so I'm not so brave. Okay, so I just line that up, put my stamp a magic in place. Remove that. And the colour that I'm using is soft suede. I just put my finger in that, didn't I? I'm trying to do this one handed. Right, okay. So let's go for that. That seemed to go down sideways. No, it's okay. I see I've smudged one of my birds there. Though. I think that'll dictate where one of the clouds are. <laughs> right, okay, I think that's all okay. So next we put our balloon together and you need your um, silicon sheet for this. As you can see, I, I use mine to do my Wink Stella painting on. I'll have to clean that, I think, after the video. Right, so I'm going to use Tombow for my glue. Let's just do that up first. That's not good to leave that open. And I'm just putting Tombow on as many places as I can. If when you're doing this you find that you squeeze too hard and you've got too much glue come out, just dab it, dab the whole um, hot air balloon onto a piece of scrap paper so that that will take off the excess glue that you don't need. I can't believe that I've had so much fun playing with this stamp set because it's really not the kind of thing I would normally go for. Um, but I really have enjoyed it. I keep coming up with different things that I think that could be done with this. I've got another one to show you at the end of the video. 
don't want to say anything about it, I don't want to spoil the surprise. Nothing wildly exciting, it's just what I think it looks like. Right, now I've put glue everywhere except for those two um, uprights there, that one there and that one there, because they're not going to have any um, cutouts stuck to them. Right, so now what we do is, um, I would like my scissors to reappear, Here we, uh, not scissors, tweezers. So first of all I'm going to use a Cajun craze. In fact, should I move that off because you can't see very well, can you? That's better. Okay, Cajun craze, I've got the wrong side facing up to me and this is going to cut, cover those first two lines of cutouts. Okay, so it doesn't go over the edge anywhere. Fits in there really nice and snug. Again, you've got Tangerine Tango. That is going to cover up from that band down to that band and it should fit in really nice and snugly up there. If you're using tweezers like this it is easy just to push it up a little bit if you need to. And then I have Delightful Dijon and that's going to cut, cover the next band. As you can see none of them are coming over the edge. And then I have So Saffron, wrong side up. Make sure that's fitting in really nicely. And then crumb cake. So that can do the bottom piece. And then Emerald Envy. Okay. Yeah, you know, one of the things I think about this, if you were doing this for a man, it would look quite nice if you did um the colours of um, any team that they support, like a football team or maybe a baseball team or something, whatever colours they are. That'd look quite nice, wouldn't it? Right, so we've done that. Um, that's going to be going on there. So let's put our card together. Not the inside for just yet. So whatever your preferred method of glue is. one. I don't know what I'm holding on to that for at the moment. I don't think I need that again. Oh maybe I do actually. When I stamp the whatever I'm going to put on the inside of the card. Since the new year that really has started to be my regular thing to do the insides. Which I've never done before. Not, not on videos anyway. There we go. And then I do the hot air balloon next and I'm going to use dimensionals for this. I'm going to put four large ones. And I'm going to cut one small piece just for the center. That's just to make sure that the center doesn't dip down. And then I just need a small piece for the basket. Now when you put your balloon onto your um, card, it's up to you to decide whether the balloon is sailing nice and straight or whether they've been caught by a gust of wind and they're blowing sideways. Okay. 
Right. Let me just hold this up a bit first. Right, okay. So that's fine. I don't want it to come too close here, but equally I want to leave some room up here for clouds. Now these are all the little clouds that I've been die cutting. And just to give them a bit of dimension, oops, don't go under there. I've been um, sponging them with some, what colour have I used? Soft uh, smoky slate. So that's been done. So what I'm going to do, if I do one each of these, that should be ample. If I change my mind and want some more, then I will just sponge them as I need them. Okay, so all I do is, in fact, this is probably still, well, maybe not. It had been dried out since I was last doing this. I don't do it too heavily, it's just so that uh, because I'm putting white onto white I just like to be able to see the edge there. And that's that one. Oops. I didn't want to have any what I call dirty clouds this time. As you know, I like to try all different sorts of ways of doing this. I mean, the one with the first one with the clouds that I did, I made them look like, or at least what I think looked like rain clouds. A bit dirty grey, but I don't want that on this one. I think because I think the sun on this one looks hotter than the other one. Right, so what I do to decide where I want this to go, first of all, I've got a bird there that has smudged. That one there. So that's definitely going to be a cloud. Do it like that, I think. So I can still see that one and see he's behind there. Um, this needs a cloud. Um, I have another big one up there, I think. And again, it doesn't matter if it goes over the sky. Um, I mean the sun. I think that'll be okay. And then that one can go underneath. This one can come on top. I quite like them being on top. Um, I wonder if that will cover up that one. Otherwise, I, I don't want to get too many clouds, that's what I'm hesitating about. In fact, no, I'll leave that one. He can stay like that. Um, so, do I want another cloud up here? No, I'm going to stay like that. Right, so I'm going to adhere these down with glue. So that, that one there, don't move them away, you'll forget where you've put them. This one's going to go on and off. So if I just put a little bit of glue there and I'll use dimensional on the bit that's going to be off from the balloon. Okay, so I've got a little bit of glue here and the dimensional. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting it down to like pulling it over this way until I can feel the dimensional hitting the side of the balloon. Okay, so that will be level. And then this one's for the top. Like 
so let the birds show through. Um, do I want to put that one up? No. Put it underneath. go off for another project. So there we go. There, oh no it isn't there's today's card is it? I've got to remember that I'm now doing insides. So what I did inside here, oh I did the sun and the balloon there. I did the balloon in always artichoke which is the same colour here and that's the same sun, sunshine. Sorry about that, that's my mobile phone going. I should have put it in the drawer. Right, so let's do the sunshine first. Let's see if I can get the sun a bit higher. Well, I'll have to because this is where people are going to be writing. I just hope that I don't do it so high that I lose the actual sun. Oh, there we go. No, that's good. And then the small balloon. And just pop that right down in the corner. There we go. So let me put this one inside the card first. that one. Actually in the future when I'm showing you my cards I really want to show you what I've done on the insides because I've done something inside that first one that I showed you as well. I mean it'll only be hot air balloon but I think on that one that's the one that I used the one of our ombre stamp pads. Um, And I didn't just use the stamp pad because it was this size balloon and it was too the balloon is too small to actually see the beauty of the ombre ink pad. So what I did was I got the stamp and I just stamped the top part of the stamp in the top part of the ink so it was dark and then the bottom bit I just stamped in the bottom part of the um, ink pad. Right, okay, talk too much at times, don't I? Right, so there's those two. You've seen both of those. This is the inside. Oops, collecting rubbish here as well. If I can just show you that. See how they've got the two tone? I used Emerald Envy, which is a retired colour now. Um, but they've. you can use uh, Peekaboo Peach, which would have gone nicely with this. But you can see I've got two definite colours there. Rather than... It's not ombre, is it? you know, different colours, but um, it's that kind of effect. Um, and the last one that I want to show you is one that I used some grey background to. I think that looks like snow, don't you? Absolutely just like snow. I was really quite pleased with that. Didn't plan it like that at all. And by the way, this paper comes from Carried Away, which is... Um, a set of designer series paper that you can choose as a gift um, because we're going through a celebration for every £45 you spend you can choose a gift out of the celebration catalogue and this DSP is one of them there's beautiful designs in it really lovely anyway there you go it's enough talking from me oh the inside of this one the balloon um, 
Many thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this project and I hope you give it a try. Um, you can see what it's like with the um, Winker Stello if you do the whole lot, just one bit and none of it. Um, so hopefully it helps you to make decisions which way you want to go. If you'd like to leave any comments or ask any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments box in the big box below or email me at jambi at jambicards.com. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here today, again, they'll be in the box below. There'll be a link for my 24-7 online stamping up shop. If you've enjoyed my video and would like to see more, please click on the subscribe button and you'll be notified each time I upload another video, which is normally on Wednesdays and Sundays. And finally, I'll be putting all the details of the products that I've used and the measurements on the screen. Um, but if you can't see because of the device that you're watching on, if you click on show more below, that'll open the big box up and everything will be in there for you, all the details. And as I say, don't forget, it's celebration till the 31st of March 2017. And for every £45 you spend, um, you can choose a free gift. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.